everybody. I'm Mal. I'm the zookeeping interpreter here at the Trailside Museums and Zoo here to talk to you today about the winter survival of the Canada Goose. Now the Canada Goose is probably best known for its fall migration. So September, October, these guys are going to be flying south from their native land of Canada here to overwinter in the United States. Now the reason they do this migration is primarily for food availability. If the ground's covered in snow, they're going to have a lot more of a difficult time foraging for food. So their migration can be up to 2,000 to 3,000 miles long. And in a 24 hour span, these guys can go up to 1,500 miles. Now these guys don't go super fast when they fly. They're going at about 30 miles an hour. These are big birds weighing up to 20 pounds. So it's going to take a lot of energy to get them off the ground and into their migration. So they have a couple of specific strategies that they use during their migration to get them south. Now most migratory birds know when it's time to migrate instinctively. They get this sort of restlessness in the fall that the field of etiology calls Zogunru! I think that's a very fun word. Fun fact that animal behavior was actually first studied in Germany. So you get a lot of fun German words in animal behavior. But geese don't get Zogunru. Instead, they judge when it's time to migrate, when it's getting cold, when the food availability is running out, and they'll make a decision all together as a group that it is time to migrate and they'll signal to the flock that it's time to go by pointing their beaks up to the sky and honking. These guys want to wait for the right weather conditions to migrate to save as much energy as possible. So they're going to wait for a tailwind coming from the north that's going to help them ride down to the south. Another thing these guys are going to do to save energy is flying in that distinctive V formation. So that's not only to keep classy good looks with these guys, that's actually to save energy. And it's actually called vortex surfing, which sounds like a sport that I'd want to try. So the way it works is the bird in the front, he's not getting much out of it. He's clearing the way and sort of creating a wave for the other birds to coast off of. Imagine that the air is like water. Now air's a lot easier to move through than water, but there still is some resistance. So what the other birds in the V formation are doing is they're coasting off of that wave that's created by that first bird. And when the first bird gets tired, they'll all take turns being the line leader in the V formation to save as much energy as possible. Now, a lot of the Canada Goose's migration is a mystery to scientists. We don't know exactly how they know how to get where they need to go. The major theory right now is that they are navigating by landmark and the migration route is taught to them by older birds who have done the migration before. These guys can live up to 24 years, meaning that they're going to make the same migration two dozen times in their lifetime. So the older birds teach the younger birds where the rest stops are along the way, where they can stop to feed and refuel and where they need to go for the winter to overwinter. Then in spring, they do it in reverse and fly back up north to their breeding grounds. Now, not all Canada geese migrate in the winter. If there's enough food around, they'll stick around for the winter. And they have a couple of adaptations for dealing with the cold weather. First is their waterproof feathers that keeps their down and their skin from getting wet when they're in the water. They have a gland at the base of their tail called the preen gland. They're gonna use that to spread a waterproof oil on their feathers and that's what's gonna keep them dry and underneath their primary feathers, they have a soft, fluffy down. Now, goose down is actually something that we humans use to insulate our jackets. So we already know that it's a good insulator. These guys are gonna line their nests with it to keep their young warm, and they're gonna keep themselves warm from the cold. Lastly, they have counter current exchange in their feet. So if you see a goose standing out on the ice and you're wondering, how is he not frozen to that spot? That's because of the blood flow in his body is keeping his feet warm. So while his feet are out in the cold, that blood flow is going to its body cavity where it's reheating and sending fresh warm blood to the feet, keeping the feet unstuck from the ice. Now with climate change and urban expansion, we are seeing changes in the migration patterns of Canada geese. More urban areas where these guys can overwinter in ponds or on golf courses is creating more habitat and food availability. So the need to migrate becomes less. Their migrations are also seeing with the longer summers and increased food availability in the summers is they're happening later in the year 
and they're coming back earlier in the year. And you can see that with a couple other bird species too, like robins around here. I took some time to interview the geese at Trailside on their opinions of spending the winter here. Here's what they had to say. Now, I don't speak goose, so you can take whatever they just said at face value.